Mr. Heffernan here, and here is some centripetal motion equations. Okay, so centripetal motion, the main derived equation from the last video was this one here. Centripetal acceleration is equal to your speed squared, or the magnitude of your instantaneous velocity squared, divided by the radius, and it's towards the center of the circle. So uh, towards the center of the circle is the negative c hat direction, and moving away is the positive c hat. So uh, later we're going to derive these two other equations right here. Uh, one that uses period, uppercase T, and one that uses frequency, lowercase f. Okay, so first let's derive the one with the period in it. So the distance around a circle, or its perimeter of a circle, is known as circumference, uppercase C. And the time it takes to complete one lap of the circle is known as period, uppercase T. And of course, we know that uh, speed is equal to distance over time. So we're going to take the, the distance, the circumference, 2 pi r, and replace the distance with that. Uh, we're going to take the time and replace it with period t. And then over in the formula for uh, v squared over r, we're going to replace the v with the 2 pi r over t. So we're going to get 2 pi r over t squared. So then we're going to get 2 squared is 4, pi squared is pi squared, r squared, and then we got over t squared, and so we can drop that to the bottom. So now we got an, air, an r squared over an r, which simplifies to being just an r. So we've derived the formula. The other formula is using frequency. So the time to complete one lap or one cycle is the period, uh, but the number of cycles you can complete per unit time is known as frequency. So uh, if you take a look at the formula here, uh, period is total time over the number of cycles. And frequency is the inverse or the opposite of that. It's the number of cycles per total time. So to find period, it's just 1 over the frequency, or frequency is just 1 over the period. So we're going to take this period equals to 1 over f, and we're going to sub it in for the t right here. So right here we're going to get 1 over f squared. And so that's going to bring the f to the top, and we're going to get 4 pi squared r f squared. And that's the other formula for centripetal motion. So now we have three formulas for centripetal motion. Uh, v squared over r, 4 pi squared r over t squared, and 4 pi squared r f squared. Now uh, it's important we use scientific units just to make things easier. So um, acceleration probably should be measured in meters per second squared. And if in that case, period should be in seconds and frequency should be in hertz, which is a cycle per second. So if you're given RPM, revolutions per minute, you just need to convert them to hertz. And it's easy, one cycle per second, one hertz, is the same as 60 revolutions or cycles per minute. So here's an example one, using one of the formulas. Here we got a road runner traveling um, east at 7.85 meters per second. And then uh, 10 seconds later, it's going to be traveling south at 7.85 meters per second. So it's, it's moving in a circular path here. So uh, what is the acceleration of the bird at any given time? We can find out using our original formula. So um, the speed is 7.85 squared. The radius is 50 meters because the, the width of the track was 100, so the radius is 50. And when we put it in the calculator, we get 1.23 meters per second squared towards the center of the circle. Okay, example two. A hunter is using a sling. Okay, it's one meter long. So from the, uh, the pivot point in the hand to the uh, center of mass where the rock's located is one meter. And this person is um, twirling it around 180 times per minute. So 180 rev RPM. First thing we have to do is convert that to hertz. So 180 divided by 60 is 3 hertz. So that means it's going around the person three times per second pretty fast. And so now we'd like to find out the launch velocity of the, lock, of the rock. So uh, we're going to use two formulas for centripetal acceleration, v squared over r and 4 pi squared r f squared. So we're going to put those two formulas together. And so we're going to get v squared over the 1 meter equals 4 pi squared times the 1 meter times the 3 hertz squared. So we're going to cross multiply the 1 up, which doesn't really do anything, 
Then we're gonna square root both sides. And when we're done, we're gonna get 18.8 meters per second or 67.9 kilometers per hour. So this, uh, this rock will fly out at almost 68 kilometers per hour. Okay, third example using uh, the formula we haven't used yet. The radius of the Earth is 6,380 kilometers. So from the center of the Earth to the, to the, um, to the surface is approximately 6,380,000 meters. Or in scientific notation, 6.38 times 10 to the 6. Um, the period, the time it takes to spin around once, is 24 hours, which is 86,400 seconds. So, um, how would that affect somebody? What would the acceleration be? So in this case, we're going to be using the one with period. So we have 4 pi squared, the radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters square, um, meters, sorry. We're divided by 86,400 seconds squared. And we're going to get an acceleration of 0 0.0337 meters per second squared. So um, because the person standing on the edge, they're going to feel um, like a, a motion outwards, a centrifugal acceleration, I guess you could say, of this value here. If you divide by 9.8, you get 0 0.00344 g's. So that means the person is feeling a, a change in their apparent weight of 0.344%. So they're actually going to weigh a little bit less than normal, or at least they'll, they'll feel that way. So a person will feel 0.344% uh, less heavy. So a 100 pound person will actually now feel like they only weigh 99.7 pounds. Okay, in summary, uh, the three centripetal motion equations are very useful. We got v squared over r, 4 pi squared r over t squared, and 4 pi squared r f squared, all towards the center of the circle. You can combine equations when necessary, or you can just use one if you, if you like. And they're useful for solving many kinds of problems. For example, spin cycle in a washing machine, um, an aeronautical centrifuge, or a blood centrifuge. So I hope this helped. Thank you.